today's project diary, I will help you learn and identify the dangers of giant hogweed. Hi guys and welcome to Project Diaries. Today's video is going to be a bit more of a warning information video. I want to talk about hogweed. Now I've seen this being promoted all over social media a lot lately. There's adults and children getting hurt by this. And it's dubbed one of Britain's most poisonous flowers. So I want to give you a lot more information on what the dangers are and how to deal with it if you can. So let's jump into today's video. Giant hogweed was originally brought into Britain in the Victorian time around the 1890s from Southeast Asia also known as Heraclium mantagatsianum. People back then used hogweed and giant hogweed as elaborate centerpieces for their gardens because giant hogweed can grow over 20 feet tall and the flowers can span up to a metre. But now they've self-seeded and you can find them almost anywhere around the country. Giant hogweed shouldn't be confused with the UK's native hogweed. You can tell the difference fairly quickly because giant hogweed has around 20 stems to the flower and native varieties have around 12 to 15. They're also known as Heraclium spondylium, which actually has some edible parts, so please don't get these confused. Native hogweed can be dangerous for people with allergies or skin sensitivity, but it's not as harmful as giant hogweed. Hogweed may brighten up riversides and parkways with its really wide white flowers, but they can be extremely harmful for human skin. It causes something called phototoxicity. The toxic part is the sap produced by the flower, but it can seep through the leaves and the stem. The stem also grows these needle-like spikes. You can identify them by their leaves. There's three distinctive points to each leaf and they're quite sharp. They look similar to a maple leaf. There's also an indentation running down the centre of each part. Giant hogweed leaves have a slightly waxier finish, unlike the native hogweed which are slightly darker green and have really fine white hairs, much like a courgette leaf. If you accidentally brush up against the plant where the sap is, or pick the flowers or break the stem, this will release the toxins onto your skin. It's advised to wash it off immediately. If you're unable to wash your skin, make sure it's wrapped up and protected away from sunlight. The poison starts to eat away at the UV protection of your skin layer and causes something called photodermatitis. Once the poison has burnt off the layer of your skin protecting you from the sun, any direct sunlight can cause blisters. The longer you allow the sap to stay in your skin, the more it will burn. And if left on for a 24 or 48 hour period, it can look like this and the more direct sunlight will cause more blistering. Some people's burns have been so severe they've been hospitalized or even gone blind. Some severe cases has meant people needed skin grafts. These are photos from recent reports in a newspaper and I cannot imagine how painful this can be. So please, if you're out in country areas or walkways or riversides, please be careful. So I really hope you found today's video informational and, and it will help people stop getting injured by this. Um, you know, the, the NHS is under a lot of pressure at the moment, so any kind of relief from that, that'll be great. And I really don't want anybody to get harmed, especially kids. And the fact that the flowers look really similar to, to carrot flowers, you know, I don't want that um, misunderstanding to happen, especially when you're just out trying to enjoy the countryside, parks or riversides. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, stay safe, please stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck gardening. Take care. If you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.